Gladys hey, coming right up to speak oh. right Bill, are you the only congressman here that the president ought to mention? Right. Okay. I, know, yeah, they're, they're I, think they're... I think most of his crowds is kids. <laughs> you know, he was your welcome at Bowling Green so much he came back. Just for you. <laughs> same route that he took 36 years and one day ago. He was the last Democrat I voted for. Let us, let us start with the record. The record of the administration which Mr. Mondale carried a full partnership. In those four years, they, put, they took the strongest economy in the world fed baby that they left on our doorstep in January of 1981. It was a snarly economic wolf with sharp teeth. The suffering of America, the deep and painful recession, and the outrageous and frightening inflation. These things didn't start by accidental ignition or spontaneous combustion. They came about through the concerted mismanagement of the administration of which Mr. Mondale was a part and his liberal friends who controlled the Congress. They gave us five in a little more than a year. <laughs> senior citizens. Senior citizens were driven into panic by higher rents, the exorbitant fuel costs, dramatically increasing food prices, and a federal health care cost which went up a massive 87% in just those four years. And they called that fairness. They punish the poor and the young who struggle. Let's look at interest rates. My opponent has referred to something now that he calls the real interest rate, and it concerns you greatly. Well, I don't think because you live too well, they know you have to learn to sacrifice more and live with less and within economic limits. Well, I found that it's not so much that our opponents have a poor memory of this ruinous past, they just got a darn good forgettery. <laughs> and, one of the, and I don't think my opponent will mention it in this campaign. Possibly because it was over 20 when he left the vice presidency and is now down to 11.6. by reminding the Ohio voters of the true record, and I quote, in the period between 1976 and 1980. Now, in the worship of big government that my opponent still supports. His philosophy can be summed up in four sentences. If it's income, tax it. If it's revenue, spend it. And the answer to his promises is higher taxes. 
and massive new tax increases are precisely what he proposes. A few weeks back, he called his new plan, Pay As You Go. But what it is, of course, is nothing but the old plan. Those tax increases to pay for his promises add up to the equivalent of 1,800. When the centerpiece of his economic program is back-breaking tax hikes, you can see why my opponents spend so much time using outrageous scare tactics. Now that's not my opponent's only tax extravaganza. He came up with still another one. It was a reform that we passed to protect you from the cruel hidden tax when government uses inflation to force you into higher tax brackets when you get a cost of flop. But forgive me, I've decided to call it a Fritz flop. <laughs> Reducing government spending and reducing deficits could worsen a recession and cause unemployment. The new Mondale thinks higher taxes lead to a healthy economy. The old Mondale publicly supported... I just thought that was appropriate today when probably right now, or possibly right now, I should say, I don't know where they are, but while we're riding across Ohio on this train, those young heroes of ours, male and female, are circling this earth several times in that shuttle which will land tomorrow, and God bless them. For our children. And you know, I have to say, all over the country, in meetings of this kind, I have been so thrilled and excited to see the turnout of young people at meetings of this kind. Let me just say for all of you, or to all of you, you're what this campaign and what this...
gentlemen, the President of the United States. Mr. Truman could make very plain the differences between himself and his opponent. My friends, that's just what which he was carrying as a full partner. In those four years, they took the strongest economy in the world and pushed it to the brink of collapse. They created a calamity of such proportions that we're still suffering the consequences of these and the suffering of America, the deep and painful recession, and the outrageous and frightening inflation. These things didn't start by accidental ignition or spontaneous combustion. Senior citizens were driven into panic by higher rents, exorbitant fuel costs, dramatically increasing food prices, and federal health care went up 87%. They called it fairness. They punished the poor and the young who struggled as prices of necessity shot them. The mortgage rates more than doubled. Car loans were hard to get and expensive. The automobile and home building industries were brought to their knees. And after all this economic punishment, our opponents said the trouble was you lived too well. 1976 in the campaign, they added the inflation rate to the unemployment rate, and it came to 12.6%. And they said that would have mentioned it in this campaign, possibly because when he left the vice presidency, you know, it was over. Federal taxes. Spend. He is a true friend of the taxpayers 
and a great friend to those who depend on economic progress to give them a chance at a better life. My opponent and his allies live in the past. They're celebrating the old and failed policies of an era that has passed them by. As if in boldly charting a new course. What's that thing for? It's sitting that we're campaigning today on Harry Truman's train. Following the same route that he took 36 years and one day ago. He was the last Democrat I I campaigned for him in 1948. Mr. Truman can make very plain the difference to this evening. Let us start with the record. The record of the administration which Mr. Mondale carried a full and pushed it to the brink of collapse. They created a calamity of such proportions that we're still suffering the consequences of those economic time bombs. You know, on that 87%, some fairness. They punished the poor and the young who struggled as prices of necessity shot up faster than the other. And my opponent has referred to something that he calls real interest rates. So people who don't pay interest reach on some academic smoke screen or foggy economic theory. What they know is that when Jerry Ford left the three index, well, 1980 came along and uh, they didn't mention the misery index. And I don't think my opponent will mention it in this campaign, possibly because when he left office, the misery index was... My opponent has done a very good job of slipping, sliding, and ducking away from this record. But here in Ohio, during the primaries, a Democratic candidate for the nomination, Senator Gary Hart, Senator Hart, Walter Mondale may pledge stable prices, but Carter Mondale could not cure 12% Ohio. Those disastrous consequences did not come about by accident. They came through the implementation of the very policies of out-of-control spending, unfair taxation, and worship of big government that my opponent... <laughs> All this year, he's lavished his campaign with promises that staggered even his Democrats.